it's your girl Whitney Payton, and you're watching Ambi. Yeah. Hey everyone, it's Alicia from Ambi, and I would like to welcome you to my interview with Whitney Payton. Hello. Heck yeah. Hello. How are you? Am I allowed to curse on this? Absolutely. I don't know. Awesome. <laughs> Love it already. <laughs> Love I thought it we already. were going to have a couple of curses in the intro, like so fucking great. Yeah, time. yeah, right. Good, good. Oh, well, I just didn't know because then I have to think about filtering myself, and I'm like. You don't that's have to just sweat hard. It. That's just hard. Yeah, <laughs> like when I do shows and they tell me right before I perform, they're like, "By the way, this is like a family-friendly show, so you can't curse during the show." I'm like, "Oh my god!" Now I have to think as you I'm like performing. Yeah, <laughs> I can't do that. It's impossible. No promises. Well, we are here in Toronto as you are now touring with yes. your good friends in Twisted. So yes. how's everything going down? You've known these guys for a long time. Yeah, man. I mean, I started when I was like 15 or so, and I probably met them around then. So. I've known him for a long time, even though we're not the exact same genre of music, I've still been able to uh, perform with them and be accepted by the fans. And I mean, we're both hip hop and everything, so they're definitely a little more hardcore than me, but it's like, they're, they're like my big bros. So it's cool. Knowing them since your teenage years, if you were yeah. to think back to your first meeting with the guys, what comes to mind? They're so tall. <laughs> when I first met them too, I thought the same thing. They were like towering. Really, yeah, I mean, I'm only like 5'2", so when I met them, I was like, oh my God, these guys are larger than life. And it's really scary because they're all painted up, so they're coming up to you and looking down and like, oh, this is scary. But no, they're so nice. They're really, really nice. So my thought was they're like football players, but they're really nice. <laughs> You're absolutely crazy at your live shows. I've seen photographs yeah. of you hanging from pipes and from ceilings. Has yeah. everything been pretty smooth sailing, though? Because some of the stuff you pull off. Oh, a don't jinx risky. me. Don't jinx me. There's one to knock on. We're all, we're all good. Yeah, where is it? There we go. Um, yeah, I mean, it goes smoothly. For the most part, I'm really small, so I can get away with hanging on different things and not pulling it down. I wouldn't advise Twisted to maybe try it. No. Uh, but. <laughs> I, I try to make sure things are sturdy ahead of time. There are venues that I go to that they'll be like, you have to sign this waiver. We already know about you. We've heard all about you. You have to sign this waiver that if you get hurt, it's not our fault, things like that. But for the most part, I've been, I've been really fortunate. So it doesn't take many people to catch me if I'm going to like crowd surf or something. <laughs> One person paying attention. You're good. I'm good to go. Yeah. <laughs> You posted something that really caught my eye, and it was a photo of you kind of contemplating things, and the caption was, thinking of pineapple pizza. Yeah. And I know you love pizza, but whenever yes. I bring up pizza to people, and they, I mention pineapple because I love it, they always think Good. I'm crazy. I think there's, like, two kinds of people. Yeah, the pineapple pizza <laughs> people are just not. Like, and there's none. Yes, exactly, because okay. I always – I love posting that stuff, too, because people – I get so mad they about it. Really like rather than up. like you could post something political and there's gonna be people that are mad, but like pineapple pizza, like way more mad. Yeah, I really I don't know way why it really mad. pisses them off. So they're like, I'm unfollowing you. I am not a fan anymore <laughs> <laughs> because of that. I wanted to hear your thoughts on it because I go through that more yeah. than I'd like to admit. So. Yeah, I've, I've, I post it all the time. Now I just more post it as a joke just to get people mad about it. Okay. Well, on the music front, Firecracker Pyro Edition yeah. is now out. So yes. congratulations on thank that. Thank you, thank you. People are absolutely loving it. I love the photographs you've been posting of everyone just holding the CDs up. Like, people are totally yes. on board with this release. Which is cool because, as you guys know, like, it's all about streaming usually nowadays. People don't buy records anymore. I'm lucky to have kind of like that cult following, and especially with these guys twisted. I mean, they just have that following that is made up of collectors, and they just like to collect uh, the artwork because it's different when you have the packaging and you can fold out the insert and check it out and uh, see the cover and actually hold it in your hand. And uh, I'm just really lucky that I have fans that still will buy CDs. On this release, you really flawlessly are able to fuse a bunch yeah. of different genres like rock. I love how you actually went into pop. You're like fusing pop and electronica and R&B. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I just did whatever just, I wanted. It works. So was that yeah. difficult for you, trying to make those things work together? Did it just happen really naturally? I've kind of always been really versatile where I've been all over the place. That could honestly be like pro and con for me. Like because it's like, it's good because... I could fit anywhere. I could go on tour with guys like Twisted. I can go on tour with rock bands, which I've done before. I could probably play Warp Tour and be good there, you know. So it allows me to be in so many different lanes. But at the same time, it's like, what? make up your mind. Like, what is your sound? So um, I'm going to have to start figuring that out more and more in the future. But I just, yeah, I like that I was able to do some rock stuff. I like that uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing more pop stuff. I'm just kind of doing whatever I feel like I think there's people don't have just one emotion so why would there just be 
one kind of sound that you would listen to, okay. you know? Well, I want to discuss Team Underdog, all underdogs, yeah. representing other underdogs. Yes. I, I love the idea of that whole community Thank right you. there. You're welcome. I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about your you versus you mentality. I kind of think everyone's felt like an underdog in their life before. Um, it's, it's weird because I've almost had arguments with different labels and stuff about it because when I've had labels in the past approaching me uh, regarding signing me, they were like, we don't really understand the whole Team Underdog movement. It kind of almost sounds like you're like advertising being a loser or something you know along those lines and they're like we don't know if people are going to want to like call themselves that and and I was like that's not what it is at all I'm not trying to say hey yeah we're just losers it's just someone who's expected to lose but that doesn't mean you have to lose mm -hmm. you know it, it means that you weren't the expected winner but you can come come out on top and I think everyone's felt like an underdog and it's it's not always because someone else is putting you down a lot of times you're your own worst enemy and you kind of psych yourself out of things or don't try different things because you just don't think you're going to get it or do it or, and you know I've done that to myself so many times I've been I've like paced around before I go on stage and like I've thrown up before I go on stage thinking I'm gonna you know I'm gonna bomb the show that I'm so scared and then it's it, some of the best shows I've ever done when I was so <laughs> scared and I'm like why do I psych myself out for these shows so that's I mean it's kind of a universal thing I think anyone can relate to no matter what they do in life something that I did relate to that you shared um, just kind of going hand in hand with the team underdog aspect is yeah. if it's not positive stuff don't say shit to me because <laughs> all <laughs> because all I'm feeling is good vibes to cite anyone who wants to doubt the movement so are there a lot of doubters who kind of maybe just <laughs> don't don't get it I was on one that day I was like don't say shit to me <laughs> well it's just like <laughs> um, I mean, I, I wouldn't say there's a lot of uh, haters, but it's so weird because we as people, it's like we always dwell on the people that say the bad things. Like you could have a hundred people say something nice to you and then one person's like... You get caught up on the one. Yeah, and you're like, you think about that one and then you're like, why am I thinking about this? So that's why I was like, okay, you know, if it's not positive vibes, like let's, let's not talk about it because <laughs> we dwell on the one thing and, and talk about it and kind of keep it relevant. You know what I mean? I'm like, we should... And every artist, like, we've all done it where we, like, kind of point out one hater or whatever. And it's like, we should spend more time uh, talking to the fans and the people saying nice things rather than, like, arguing with other people that are saying bad things and not giving the attention to where it should be. So that's probably <laughs> how I was feeling that day. I really enjoy following you on Twitter because you share some Thank pretty you. great comments. <laughs> um, one of those recent ones being, I want to become a tennis player just so I can make ninja noises every time I swing the racket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was like the edited version too, because I feel <laughs> like some of the noise. Well, no, I just feel like some of the noises are like crazy, especially in women's tennis. I was yeah. like, what are the, <laughs> what is this? You know. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I just want to be in tennis now, just so I can make some of those noises. Were you watching rad. something and it came to mind, or how did that? I don't even know how I no? thought of it. No, I was driving the car. This is this is what happens when I'm on tour because we're just we have long drives to different places, and then these are the things that I start thinking of, and okay. it's really dangerous. <laughs> One other tweet that caught my eye was, a vanilla shake with chocolate syrup poured in it is not a chocolate shake. Yeah, I'm fired up about yeah, that. Who, who screwed you over on that one? We were at, oh, I can't even, I'm trying to think of the hot dog place. But so many people do this, but we were at like a hot dog place known for hot dogs, I guess. And they, uh, yeah, I hate it when they use vanilla ice cream and they pour chocolate syrup into it and mix it up. And then they're, they're like, it's a chocolate shake. Mm -hmm. I think McDonald's does that. There's a lot of places that do that, actually, because it's probably easier than carrying every flavor ice cream. But that is fraud. That's, like, why I have trust issues. <laughs> That's honestly why. Because that and, yeah, and because of raisin cookies as well, because you think it's chocolate chip, and then you eat it, and you're like, oh, but just by looking at it. And you're yeah, by looking at it, you think it's mm -hmm. a chocolate chip cookie, and then you eat it, and it's a raisin cookie. Just like you drink the chocolate shake, and you're like, this is not real. This is... <laughs> This is fraud, so false advertising. Did you McDonald's. end up drinking the whole thing anyways? Yeah, but okay. I was angry. <laughs> but I was like, God damn it, and I'm drinking it, and I'm just angry. I'm like, I'm going to write a Yelp review, but I'm still drinking it as I'm writing the Yelp review. So, you know, but I can't even front. I do hope on this tour you were able to find a really good chocolate shake. I know. I got to go to, like, one of those, like, nifty 50 places or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any places in Canada, any Toronto <laughs> chocolate shake places? We're totally going to give you some suggestions after. Yeah, yeah. Pineapple okay. beets and a chocolate shake, and I'll be good to go. Awesome. <laughs> well, just to wrap things up, is there anything you would like to leave with your fans once we were talking about who will be viewing? Man, I mean, 
I'm just thankful for the fans right now because as you said my album just dropped on Friday and one of the crazy things about it is I had dropped albums before this but none of them were being counted uh, like in the system that I was just so underground that I was selling like a couple thousand records each record I dropped and I wasn't being counted for billboard or anything because I just had no label or anything like that but now with this new album we're actually being counted so next week we find out where we are on billboard charts if they're at all and it'll just be like a really big milestone for me. So I appreciate the fans who have been getting the record. Thanks, underdogs. Appreciate you. I just want to say best of luck with that. Thank and you. thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. Appreciate and it. Remember to everyone viewing, you can visit us at musicblogger.com for all exclusive interviews, features, videos, and so much more. All See right. ya. I was promised a chocolate shake. Let's do it. <laughs>